right. Well, we are live now. Uh, let's see. Give some people some time to start trickling in. We're going to go ahead and uh, just get started with finishing up coloring uh, this week's comic for the newest episode of Floof and Feathers. Uh, also, this will, if you've been following along recently, uh, this is going to be the last in the Willy Wonka parody series. Uh, that one's finally coming to an end. This is actually the longest mini series that I've done with the comic before. Uh, I've, I've done a couple before where it lasted for you know, like two or three comic strips. Uh, this one's been going for, I think this is part eight now. It's been a, a pretty long running comic. Um, so if, if you're, just now kind of popping in and seeing this for the first time, um, or if you're watching this on YouTube right now, if you haven't read the full comic, um, there there will be a link to it if you want to check out the full Willy Wonka parody miniseries. Uh, if you're watching here on Twitch, that'll be in my profile on the channel homepage, uh, or if you if you are catching this on YouTube, uh, there is a, there will be a link to that uh, in the description. You can go to my home site and read the full Willy Wonka uh, parody mini series, but this is going to be the the close of that mini arc anyway. But not to worry, we will be back, of course, next week. Um, going to have another probably uh, multi-part story coming up in starting in uh, next week's comic. So keep an eye out for that. I'm not going to say anything about that just yet. Don't want to give out any preemptive spoilers ahead of time. You'll just have to wait and see what I have planned. But uh, but I hope that everyone who has been reading has been enjoying this little this little golden ticket parody. I had a lot of fun uh, writing and illustrating it. Of course, uh, big thanks to the real wife Finnegan, Pippin, and Olivia for all their continued inspiration uh, and since you know, they're they're really the ones kind of responsible for this whole thing. Wouldn't have this comic series if it wasn't for the three of them. And of course, uh, shout out to, I guess I would call her executive creative producer, my fiance Nicole. She really helps with a, a huge part of the brainstorming process when I am writing these. Uh, I, I will spend a good a good bit of my week bouncing ideas uh, back and forth with her before anything is before I commit to to drawing or writing anything. So, just of course want to say thank you to her for all of her help that she gives. Uh, she definitely deserves a big part of the credit for what I do with this comic series. But I, I think this is going to be a pretty, pretty characteristic uh, conclusion to this little parody series. And I don't have the uh, the actual text up yet, but the you can probably guess by looking at it. The general gist is going to be that Finn is uh, announcing the contest winner after the factory tour. And for anyone who has been following this comic series for a while, um, go ahead and I'll, I'll give you I'll give you three guesses who is going to be announced as the winner of a lifetime supply of kibble. I'm sure that when the finished comic strip comes out, and you see all the text added in there, it's probably not going to come as very much of a shock when that contest winner is announced. That's all I will say on, on the matter for now. You'll just have to wait and find out. Actually, I don't need to shade that. Yeah, I just need the, the ribbon and the hat. Trying to put the shading in there too early. 
been a long week. Please forgive me. <laughs> uh, I will say, uh, as much as much as I have had fun uh, drawing this, I, I don't know that I'm going to miss drawing the top hat every week. Um, uh, I know it, it, it looks silly. I, I, I like it. It looks good. Um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, depending on the situation, certain certain shapes certain of hats are my if Even if you go back and look at the at the the earliest comics in this little mini series when it first started, uh, the shape and look of the top hat has actually changed a uh, decent bit as I kind of got more into the flow of things and figured out what I was doing a little bit better. Um, just trying to learn how to draw something as simple as a top hat the right way, which uh, you know you you wouldn't expect, but you know, when it, when it's not something that I am used to drawing all the time, when it's not something that exactly comes up a whole lot. Uh, so it, it definitely took a little getting used to. I think part of that too, is that I, I have recently made this switch to just doing one comic release per week, as opposed to before I was trying to put out oh that is way too much brown i was trying to put out uh three comics a week which is fine um but you know just trying to basically avoid burnout by trying to put out too much too quickly uh and i i also feel like that that's given me a chance to you know just focusing on one comic a week i can practice on certain things and spend more time really putting more thought and effort into the outlining of things and, and preparing the comic and not feeling like I have to rush and do the entire thing all in, in one go. Trying to sketch, outline, draw and illust and, and color an entire comic and, you know, in one morning, which is which is what I was doing before, um, and uh, I, I can say that's that that gets really old really quickly. Um, so I, I am glad that I've made this change to just doing one a week, giving myself more time to to dedicate to it, um, being able to take the time to actually practice drawing some of these different shapes and different angles of perspective and just just giving myself the the time and the room to try to continue growing which is which i i, I think at least is really important so i i hope it's been noticeable i i hope that people aren't too disappointed at only getting one comic a week now um but I, I think it's been working out pretty well, so it's it's probably going to stay that way for the for the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, but that being said, you know I'll remind everyone as I always do. Um, oh, actually, let me missed a spot there. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just remind everyone as I always do while I have a moment here. You know, if if you if you do want uh, more floof and feathers in your life on a regular basis. Um, I, I do have a Patreon page set up. And so in addition to getting your once a week comics just on the on my website and on social media and all that, there there's a ton of bonus content you can get if you sign up on Patreon. Um, you can get monthly prints of a, a five by seven print of a comic of your choice. There are also uh, monthly wallpapers that I draw uh, those are available in both uh, mobile phone and uh, desktop format, just depending on on which you prefer. Uh, there are also uh, something new that I started doing now 
there are exclusive monthly sticker packs. So each month there will be a new collection of uh, monthly themed Floof and Feathers stickers that you can get sent right to you. You can also do things like participate in reader polls and uh, you will get early access to the behind the scenes uh, preview sketch of the comic before it is actually fully drawn, uh, colored, uploaded. So you'll be able to see just the very starting outline um, of what the comic that week is going to be. You'll be able to get some uh, creative notes on that and uh, just get a little bit of a sense of what is coming. So if you want access to those kinds of sneak previews, uh, all that great bonus content, uh, there, there's tons of extra floop and feathers that you can get access to. So, you know, just something to consider for, uh, for anyone who's interested. I know I'm probably, you know, maybe a little, uh, a little biased, but I, I think it's definitely worth it just because of how much extra content you will get every month. So if you haven't already might just want to check that out. And if you're interested, if you, if you enjoy silly animals doing ridiculous things and let's be honest you know who who doesn't like that go ahead and get pip's collar colored in there i i will say though one one thing about this series i think i am going to miss doing the little Willy Wonka parody. I'm, I'm going to miss drawing Olivia with her Oompa Loompa wig because that always gives me a good chuckle. It's just, it's just so ridiculous and I absolutely love it. And I am genuinely going to miss drawing that and really just drawing anything that makes Olivia look a little bit more ridiculous is, uh, is always good by me. Uh, please don't tell her I said that, though, because she'll probably get mad and attack. She's very good at that. She's very good at acting all sweet and innocent and cute, and then just suddenly lunging in for the kill. But it's a good thing she's so cute and that we love her so much. <laughs> Because otherwise, it would probably be a very different discussion. It's funny, I don't know if anyone is, or if you've seen some of my recent uh, stories online on social media, we found Olivia's new favorite toy. Uh, I think I've mentioned before over different channels that that tends to... Uh, tends to change on kind of a rotating basis, you know, what, whatever's going to hold her interest. Uh, before it was uh, wine corks, she was going absolutely nuts for those. We actually ended up getting her just giant bulk bags of like several hundred of these corks uh, for Christmas and her birthday in the past, just because she was going absolutely crazy for it. Um, now, however, we have found her new favorite toy is the yellow metal bottle caps off of um, a Cal the Calypso Lemonade, if anyone's familiar with those. Uh, yeah, we, we bought a couple of those at the grocery store just because it was really hot out and we wanted just something cool to drink for for that afternoon. So we picked up a couple of bottles of the Calypso lemonade and brought that home. And Olivia just immediately made a beeline for the discarded bottle caps. And she now has, I think like three or four of them in her toy baskets. And that's, and that's all she wants to play with now over the past week. She'll come running over for her toy basket and we'll just go diving in head first and pick up a couple of those bottle caps in her mouth and she'll just sit in your lap just clicking on the little pop top on the cap repeatedly 
for honest, sometimes over an hour straight. She'll just sit there in your lap, just click, 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 click. It just, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad she's entertained by it at least. So there's, there's something to it. I don't know. She seems to enjoy it a lot. So now we're going to have to make sure that we stay stocked up on those. Or at least until she gets bored of it and finds something else that catches her attention, as we know, inevitably will. Because that's just how things work with her. She has a, I, I wouldn't say that she has a short attention span, but she has a very... I'd say she has a malleable attention uh, attention span. You never know what is going to keep her interest. So whenever we're buying her new toys, it's kind of a kind of a crapshoot trying to figure out. Okay, is is this something she's actually going to like for a, a while or? Is this just going to be, is this going to have no interest for her? Versus with Finnegan and Pippin both, um, they're pretty easy to shop for. Um, we almost always know what is going to catch their attention we find that uh little stuffed animals and uh and bones usually usually do the trick pretty well so as long as we keep them stocked up with those sorts of things they seem pretty happy so thank goodness for that at least bad enough having one of them be so picky. I don't know what we would do if all three of them were, were like that. So thankfully Olivia isn't too much of a of a bad influence on her siblings. Get all the speckles added in. Oh my gosh. This part always takes forever. But it is arguably one of the most, oh, too big, one of the most important parts of coloring in their comics. Again, if you've seen pictures of the their real-life counterparts on my social media, you know that these are two very, very speckly dogs. On numerous occasions, uh, Finnegan has actually been mistaken by young children as uh, some sort of uh, mixed breed Dalmatian, actually, just because he does have so many spots. So that's a big part of their appeal and their personality. Okay, I think, yes, that's all of them. Whew, finally. Takes a lot to run all those speckles. Whoa. Nope. Stay in the wines, Perry. My goodness. I know. I always I know. I always have trouble with that. That's nothing new though. You can go back and look at some of my art from from kindergarten, you'll see the same thing. I've, <laughs> I have never been good about staying in the lines. Getting better, though. Drawing digitally, at least, seems to help somewhat with that, because it's very easy to uh, 
set the lines as a layer and it's really easy to just erase the little bit that you need to. So yeah, a kindergarten art class probably would have gone a whole lot easier for me if I had had access to uh, the Procreate app back then. <laughs> Oh, well, wishful thinking. I mean, heck, if I, if I had known about this kind of thing earlier, it probably wouldn't have taken me so long to get back into, into drawing comics in the first place. I actually used to do this a lot when I was growing up. When I was younger, drawing, uh, drawing my own comic books at home was actually probably one of my biggest hobbies. And I did that all the way, you know, through like from probably first grade all the way through, uh, through middle school. And then for some reason, I just kind of stopped for a while, and I, I don't really know why. Now, you know, looking back on that, I'm really, really kind of sad that I did, because I always had so much fun with it. So it's really nice being back in the swing of that now, getting to, getting to do this again. Okay, let's see. I've got... Actually, I should probably... Let me... Oh, where's the layer with her eyes? Yeah, I should just make a new one. It's all going to get merged together later anyway. There we go. There we go. Perfect. So, let's go ahead. We can get the floor and the background colored in. Sure, we get all those nooks and crannies in the back. Don't want to leave anything blank that doesn't need to be. Drop that in, I think. Yeah, that little spot there. And that looks like everything. No, I don't want the spray paint brush. There we go. Go ahead and put in their shadows. Apologize too for all the back and forth camera tilting. That might be a little disorienting. It's easy. It's usually easier to when I'm doing the lines like that to just kind of flip it so the drawing surface is vertical and I can just bring my bring my pen down in a line. So that's why you'll see it flipping around. I don't know if I should give a, a motion warning for that or not. Maybe. Olivia's little shadow. Like I said, you can probably guess who the uh, who the contest winner is going to be. You can see Pippin looking really sad here in the last panel. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I'm probably gonna probably not hard to guess who the uh, who the winner is going to be here. That's a little too yellow. That's better. Okay, I think that's... Nope, nope. That's why I always double check. It's really easy to miss all those little spots in between their whiskers. There we go. That's better. Oh, don't want that giant gray line across the middle. That's better. Okay. That little space. And I think we should be actually almost, almost done. A few last little things to attend to. Go ahead and do the wood graining on the door. I always like using that instead of the actual wood grain brush. I don't know. I've just never really managed to, uh, to get the hang of it. I feel like using that dry brush creates a much better effect, in, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know, maybe someone else out there who uses Procreate uh, has, had, has had better luck with the with the actual wood grain brush and I'm just doing it wrong. That that could very well that could very well be it. I certainly do not uh, pretend like I know everything that I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll just go ahead here. A little bit of shading on some of the white parts on their fur. I think once we take care of that, we'll be good to go ahead and uh, put in the text. Get Livy's wings. There we go, that's better. 
Um, again, stay in the wines, Perry. Come on. There we go. I think that's everything there. All right, so we are quickly wrapping up, provided that I can keep <laughs> coloring in the wines. Let's hope it stays that way. to Pip's tail. I, I hope everyone who has been reading along enjoyed this little Willy Wonka parody mini series. I, I, I had a lot of fun writing and illustrating that. Oh, there we go. That's better. So I think that's everything there. And then just one final little bit of visual touches. There we go. Um, and then I think maybe some bright yellow for actually maybe not yellow. That's a little too close to the wall color. Maybe some orange. Let's see how that looks. No, that, that definitely doesn't work. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, that is everything colored. I think we can go ahead and... Uh, Pop in our text now. We're going to start with Finn announcing the winner, or preparing to announce the winner. Time to announce. Lifetime supply of kibble. Cause I mean, come on, what, what, what dog wouldn't want to win that kind of prize? And then Pippin and Livy are trading a knowing glance. Cause I mean, Pippin's the only dog that was even that was even in the contest. So, I mean, I think he knows who's gonna win, actually.
Hip's all excited. He knows he's winning. Zippy and... Yeah, I think that's how that's spelled. There's certain words that it just just look weird when you're trying to spell them. Recipient is not a word that I have to use very often when I'm typing, so. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. The tip's all excited. And then Go ahead and announce the contest winner. No, not dollar sign. Uh, let's bold that, make it a little bit bigger. Finn's announcing himself as the winner. I don't get how that's supposed to work. Would have been a very different movie. Would have been a very different movie. Wonka had just announced himself as the contest winner. I don't think, don't think that would work. Or for anyone who uh, who's watched The Office, uh, spoilers for season, what is it, season eight of The Office? I don't even know. Uh, but when when they have the uh, the Hay Place theme park in the parking lot, when uh, when Dwight announces himself as Hay King, it's the same kind of vibes. Like yeah, it's not it's not technically against the rules, but it probably should be. Same kind of thing here. Then we'll go ahead and close that out with Livy's words of reassurance. Might help if I could actually. Yeah, size 40, not 4. So I can actually read what she's saying. Go ahead and merge all the colors down. Give myself a little extra room. There we go. Um, Okay, make sure I have the same color. There we go, slamming his door shut. There we go. 
Maybe we can go ahead and just add the uh, add the actual balloons around all the words, and I think we're going to have a finished comic strip here for the week. Yeah, while I'm finishing up here, uh, just to remind everyone again, um, if you do want more uh, Floof and Feathers content, along with a lot of uh, really cool added bonus content that you can get, you can check out my uh, Patreon page. That's just patreon.com slash Floof and Feathers comic, all one word. Uh, pretty easy to find. Uh, you can also get links to it um, if you're watching on Twitch. There's a link to that in my profile. Uh, if you're catching this uh, a recording of the stream on YouTube, I will have a link to that down in the description below, so you can go and check that out. Um, you can also uh, read this full comic again if you want to have time to just be able to sit down and read it without watching the screen being... <laughs> Uh, you know, move back and forth and up and down. Uh, this will be coming out on Friday, June 24th. Just checking what date it actually is. So that'll be out, again, if you're watching this live, that'll be out tomorrow. Uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, then the comic uh, came out yesterday. So you can see that on my home website. You can catch it on Instagram, on uh, Tumblr. There's a Floof and Feathers uh, subreddit if you want to Go find it there and read it. Uh, any any number of places where you can get access to the full finished comics once they come out. So feel free to check that out as well. And again, if you're if you're uh, watching this recording live right now. Um, Links to all of that are just in my profile right here on Twitch. Uh, otherwise, draw that a bit better. You know, otherwise, if you're, like I said, if you're catching a recording of the video, uh, links to all of that stuff will be in the description. So you don't have to worry about uh, about missing out on anything or not having access to something. I will make sure that I include all of that, no matter when and where and how you're watching this. Definitely want to make sure that, uh, that people have access to all that kind of stuff. And of course, if you, if you do check out uh, Patreon or my, my website or find me on social media, you know, be sure to just drop a, drop a quick little message and, and say hi. It's always nice to, to meet new readers, new people who, who enjoy the series. And of course, uh, the real life Finn and Pippin and Livy, they, they all appreciate it too. They, they like hearing that the people enjoy the series that they, that they inspire. But with that being said, whoa. help if I actually put the color for the text bubble in the right layer. Anyway, so again, with that being said, I think we're wrapping up here. Uh, thank you to everyone who was able to join today. Good to see everyone here again for another uh, live stream coloring of the latest Floof and Feathers comic. So that'll be up uh, tomorrow, Friday, June 24th. And I'll be back here again uh, next week, same time, to do another uh, color comic or comic coloring session uh, and i hope to see everyone there for that uh, so thanks again for joining us and see everyone next time